डियर आचार्य जी प्रणाम आफ्टर रीडिंग दिस कॉन देर इज टर्मोइल इन साइड मी हेंस इट टुक मी अ डे टू राइट दिस क्वेश्चन नाउ द कॉन फाइंडिंग अ डायमंड ऑन अ मडी रोड गुडो was the emperor's teacher of his time nevertheless he used to travel alone as a wandering mendicant once when he was on his way to ido the cultural and political center of the kingdom he approached a little village called takenaka it was evening and a heavy rain was falling gudo was thoroughly wet his straw sandals were in pieces at a farm house near the village he noticed four or five pairs of sandals in the window and decided to buy some dry ones the woman who offered him the sandals seeing how wet he was invited him to remain for the night in her home gudo accepted thanking her he entered and recited a sutra before the family shrine he then was introduced to the woman's mother and to her children observing that the entire family was depressed gudo asked what was wrong my husband is a gambler and a drunkard the housewife told him when he happens to win he drinks and becomes abusive when he loses he borrows money from others sometimes when he becomes thoroughly drunk he does not come home at all what can i do i will help him said gudo here is some money get me a gallon of fine wine and something good to eat then you may retire i will meditate before the shrine when the man of the house returned about midnight quite drunk he bellowed hey wife i am home have you something for me to eat i have something for you said gudo i happened to be caught in the rain and your wife kindly asked me to remain here for the night in return i have bought some wine and fish you might as well have them the man was delighted he drank the wine at once and laid himself down on the floor gudo sat in meditation beside him in the morning when the husband awoke he had forgotten about the previous night who are you where do you come from he asked gudo who still was meditating i am gudo of kyoto and i am going on to ido replied the zen master the man was utterly ashamed he apologized profusely to the teacher of his emperor gudo smiled everything in this life is impermanent he explained life is very brief if you keep on gambling and drinking you will have no time left to accomplish anything else and you will cause your family to suffer too the perception of the husband awoke as if from a dream you are right he declared how can i ever repay you for this wonderful teaching let me see you off and carry your things a little way if you wish assented gudo the two started out after they had gone 3 miles gudo told him to return 
Just another five miles, he begged Gudo. They continued on. You may return now, suggested Gudo. After another ten miles, the man replied. Return now, said Gudo, when the ten miles had been passed. I am going to follow you all the rest of my life, declared the man. Modern Zen teachers in Japan spring from the lineage of a famous master who was the successor of Gudo. His name was Mu Nan, the man who never came back. Mu Nan, the man who never came back. Right. Now what is Pradeep saying? When Gudo told the man that everything in this life is impermanent and life is very brief and if you keep on gambling and drinking you will have no time left to accomplish anything else and you will cause your family to suffer too. This changed the man and he declared I am going to follow you the rest of my life. And this man left his family as well. The reason for my turmoil is that it's been more than a year that I have been listening to, watching and meeting you. There is a deep urge to just be with you. Last time when I expressed this, you said, stay where you are and unless you get a no objection certificate from your family, do not come to me. Whatever you have collected as karmic load, undo it. Don't be impatient. Gifts have been dispatched to you. If you become impatient and move from your location, the gifts will be returned as they will not find you at your address. During your last trip to Pune, when I said, I am unwinding my knots, you said, don't use the word unwind, say realignment. On another occasion you said that if you don't board the train remaining on the platform, the train will soon leave in front of you and that will be the biggest misfortune. There is also a fear which is not allowing me to jump onto the train. Daily life has become a kind of endless weight in the desert. Internally I am broke. Please guide Acharyaji. After another five miles you should return. After another 10 miles, you must return. After another 20 miles, please return and go back to where you have been all along. That's what Acharya Gudo kept saying. Pradeep, when did Acharya Gudo say Oh man, leave everything and come with me. What do you want me to say? Why do you want me to say that? Hmm? Gudo gave the man all that was needed to stay put in the home, in the family and yet remain free of suffering. And that is the maximum that the teacher can give. Gudo goes to the man's house. He is seeing 
that the wife is there. He is seeing that the kids are there. And he is seeing that the wife is troubled because of the deviant ways of the husband. Gudo has to consider the bigger picture. Gudo has to take care of the best interests of everybody in the equation. It's not just about that man. Gudo does have a relationship, at least an acquaintance with the man's wife as well. So Gudo is giving the best advice in the situations and in the given situation the best advice is don't while away your time, stop gambling. And if you are so drunk, you will never realize what is the right thing to do in this limited life. And that's all that Gudo has to say. And Gudo has not held back anything. Gudo has given away everything that needed to be told to the man and that which Gudo has told would be of use to the man, to the wife, to the kids, to the whole gathering. Gudo has neither the intention and mind you, listen very carefully, nor the capacity to give anything more than what he has already given. Neither the intention nor the capacity. Gudo has already done the right thing and the best thing. He has given the best advice. Get rid of all your mental pollution. Why are you so attracted to the alcohol? Don't you see that your entire family is depressed? Is this how you want your kids to be raised? Guru has told that. Now, beyond this, is the deep secret untouchable inner urge of the man Gudo has nothing to do with that do you get it Pradeep Ji the man in the morning decides to see off Gudo he says let me walk a little distance with you. And Gudo says, fine, a little distance. And Gudo really does not intend to have the man as company for too long. Just a few miles, just a little distance. And Gudo tells him, now go back. And Gudo has truthfully said what he wants to say. He actually wants the man to go back to his family. And Gudo says, you go back to your family. Your wife is waiting. If the man does not go back, it's the man's Atma. If the man does not go back, it's the man's heart. And the heart Pradeep is such a private thing. Ultimately, it is you have to who has to decide. Ultimately, it has to come from you. Do not expect Gudo to tell you everything. Gudo has already told you the maximum and the best he could. 
and he is still saying you go back you do not come with me you stay with your family and thrice he says you go back and you stay with your family there are certain things which must not happen in compulsion forget compulsion there are certain things that should not even be a result of suggestion there are certain things that must be so pure so private so inner so very your own that they should not require even the guru's intervention the man did not ask gudo sir is it right for me to come with you the man did not even take gudo's permission the man announced and declared to gudo i am going to come to you and stay with you my entire life and i repeat gudo had no role in this announcement this is what is called as the pure individuality of that man pure individuality which is not influenced by anybody not even by the guru guru can awaken that individuality but that individuality is so very a thing of the within that once awakened it does not require anybody's permission sanction or advice so even to stay with the guru you do not need the guru's permission you tell the guru i am staying with you you do not ask him please tell me is it all right and proper for me to come to you no you tell him i am going nowhere even if you push me out you are telling this to the guru you are not taking his permission gudo is repeatedly saying you go back you go back you go back you don't belong here you are a drunkard you are a gambler you were so very disgraceful yesterday night just last night you came and drank in front of me and ate away all the fish and passed out such is your qualification you don't know meditation forget about being spiritual you are not even a responsible husband gudu could have easily told all these things in fact he knew all these things the man didn't want even gudu to give him a qualification certificate and gudu obviously had no interest in that man is he not seeing what kind of man he is what kind of man is he ah a, a depraved man hmm because of him the entire family is down right so gudu obviously what no was not looking forward to having that man as his companion or as his follower or even as a volunteer in his work or mission gudu is very well and very clearly seeing that the man is useless and hopeless right the entire night gudu is meditating and what is that man doing snoring with the fish tumbling around in his belly and here is gudu meditating and that beast of a man is drunk and snoring obviously gudu does not think that this man is worth anything so gudu is not going to advise him to renounce home family the world and join the monastic order 
would would rather stay clear of that man he will say you go and become a better householder and that is the best you can do if the man comes with goodo it is entirely the man's prerogative please and that also tells you a thing or two about love in love you do not wait even for the beloved's consent i'm talking about spiritual love in carnal love do take consent don't go about ripping everybody in spiritual love you do not wait for consent of even the beloved you say i'm not demanding anything from you i want to be with you and for that i do not require even your permission i am not asking for favors i am not asking for money i am not asking for gifts i am not asking for anything i just want to be with you and you do not have the authority even you do not have the authority to turn me away obviously you have the authority to deny me material things that you can withhold i will not object but if i just want to be with you even you cannot stop me i just want to be with you and you know that's how lovers have survived lovers have been physically separated many a times their separation is a matter of legends but lovers have said all that you can separate is our bodies we are still one to be one we require nobody's consent or permission or cooperation it is entirely our own prerogative to be one and you can separate our bodies but you cannot separate us that is the kind of love that this man is demonstrating and that love i repeat pradeep is a very very private thing nobody should be allowed to interfere with that that love can only be respected and goodo respected the man's love Goodo didn't test it or qualify it. Goodo didn't meddle with it. The man announced, "I am going to stay with you my entire life," and Goodo silently just nodded his head. Probably even a nod was not needed. Of what use is the nod? The decision has already been made, and the decision is irreversible. and goodo is not a party to that decision mind you goodo is not involved in that decision that decision i'm saying this for the fifth time that decision is purely individual to that man goodo can at most respect that decision and when the decision of that immensity is made whenever it is made it is respected it's just that such decisions are very rarely made and therefore the question of respect does not arise but whenever such an immense decision would be made the right one would always respect it such a decision can be respected but not encouraged or abetted nobody can decide on somebody's behalf forget about the decision being made by somebody else i am saying nobody can even encourage such a decision to come about nobody must such things must be purely purely your own 
and if they are not your own and till they are not your own just wait do not ask for assistance from the teacher the teacher will tell you all the right things the teacher will not tell you to love him to love the teacher is your own individual matter but yes if you go to the teacher with love he will probably respect you the teacher comes to you he gives everything at his disposal now it doesn't behove the teacher to ask for a return not only does it not behove it is also unnecessary because the teacher does not need a return the teacher does not need a companion gudo does not need a companion so why would gudo suggest that the man should accompany him all through the journey of life are you getting it so gudo did the best he could the dignity of the teacher lies in giving the teacher is not going to turn a recruiter and say because i gave you something now you must come and work for me he does whatever he can now the rest is up to you if you feel an inner calling respond if you don't feel it it is still all right nobody is asking for a favor nobody is asking for a companion would godo have cursed the man had he returned to his house no would godo have felt offended or betrayed or hurt had the man not accompanied him no i hope i'm able to put the point across to you it's entirely up to the man and it's a mystical calling it cannot be catalyzed or brought about or influenced you cannot be encouraged to seek god you cannot be motivated to love someone it's a thing of the heart pradeep what are you asking me ask your heart as far as i am concerned you have asked me 10 times and all 10 times i have responded to the best of my ability i have already responded i have already given the best advice i could along your spiritual journey a point comes you know when even the guru must leave you alone if you keep holding the hand of the teacher how will you be able to embrace god so the teacher brings you to god and then leaves you the final thing must be done by you and you alone do not ask the teacher to act as your agent 
Do you ask somebody else to make love on your behalf? Do you ask somebody else to pray on your behalf or eat on your behalf? Then why do you want that final declaration of love to be suggested to you by somebody else? And mind you, you are not an inferior person if you do not declare that. Had it been a matter of one decision being superior to the other decision, Godo would have obviously suggested the superior decision. Godo suggested the best that he could. Now whether there lies something beyond the best, that is up to you to realize. You can be taught good manners, good etiquette, good behavior. You cannot be taught love. Hmm? Taught love will have very little life. If the man were taught love, then he would have gone about a hundred miles with Gudo. And then returned. If he could go the whole distance with Gudo, it is because his love was his own, not something taught, not taught even by the teacher. The teacher can teach you everything. But even the teacher cannot teach you how to love the teacher. In that even the teacher is helpless. And he should remain helpless. You figure out, you decide, you realize. Mm -hmm.